All right, in this video, we're gonna create something what I call a light stroke effect, where we attach a lens flare to a animated stroke where you can animate on your titles or your logo. So it's gonna be a really fun tutorial without any plugins. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope everyone is having a great day today. So this is a very straightforward tutorial with a few steps in it, like creating a stroke effect, attaching lens flares, and building an overall scene to really take this to the next level and have a completed project. So without wasting more time, we're gonna jump into our tutorial and we'll get started. And as always, you can download our project files for free if you wanna break it down even further. So we'll come over here to our tutorial composition. All we have in here is a title. So what we need to do is convert this into the stroke that you see here. And it's very easy to do this with a title. So what we do is right click the layer, go to create, and click on create mask from text. Okay, so then they'll create a solid right there with some masks, that's great. And you can also do so logo by going to layer, auto trace and auto tracing it. So it works with both ways of titles and logos. And, but we'll work with our title layer. So the first thing we need to do is go to effect, generate and grab the stroke effect. Yes. And you'll see that your first letter will be in the path up here. And that's good. But we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline and we'll set our paint style to reveal on original image. And boom, there is our first letter by itself. And we'll come here and we'll add a keyframe for end. And we'll simply just hit U on keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And we'll move that keyframe forward in time to maybe three seconds. And we'll bring down the end percent to zero percent. Perfect. And you can also select both of these keyframes, hit F9 on your keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. So now we'll have this nice stroke effect on our first letter. So this is cool. It's a little bit of a destructive workflow. So make sure that you have your title exactly how you want it. But now we can create the lens flare. So go up to layer new solid and we can call it flare one and we'll go to effect generate and we'll grab lens flare. All right, we'll come here, set the lens type to 35 millimeter prime and we'll bring down our flare brightness to 35%. And we'll also make sure that our flare is in the center of our composition. So you can grab that crosshair and boom, bring it right there in the center as best as you can. So what we'll do here is we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline. And first of all, we'll add a keyframe for flare brightness. We'll bring up the keyframes by hitting U on our keyboard. And we'll bring the keyframe forward in time just by a few frames. And we'll set the flare brightness down to zero. And we'll come right before three seconds. And we'll add another keyframe for flare brightness. Go to three seconds and bring the flare brightness down to zero. Then we'll all click the stopwatch for flare brightness. And we'll type in wiggle. Open parenthesis 2, comma, 25, close parenthesis. So now our flare will be flickering and that's cool. Now, if you want to change the color of your flare, go to effect, color correction, and add the curves effect. And you come here to the red channel and you can move this in any direction you want. You can go to the green channel and kind of just create a unique color correction. And you'll see, you'll be able to have control over changing the color of your lens flare. So when you're happy for your look, let's go ahead and smooth this out a little bit better. So let's come here to the ellipse tool and we'll grab that. And right from the center, we'll hold down control and shift our keyboard to draw a mask from the center. Just round our lens flare and we'll hit F on our keyboard for mask feather and we'll feather this up to like 250, okay? Then set the blend mode for your lens flare to screen. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to animate this along our stroke. So how do we do that? Well, first we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline. We'll grab our stroke outlines, which you should rename to your first letter. Then what we'll do is we'll hit M on our keyboard for our outline layer, and you'll see the first mass path for your letter or logo path. You'll copy that first mass path. Then you'll go to your flare layer. You'll hit P on your keyboard for position. You grab, you click on position and paste those keyframes in there. You can grab the last keyframe and you can stretch it out to say three seconds or however quick you want it to be. Make sure both the keyframes are easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And now we'll have this very simple and clean animation. Perfect. And of course, grab the out point of your flare layer and bring it into your last keyframe so the flare will just disappear after the animation is done. So now everything is set up for success to quickly duplicate everything. So to duplicate it quickly, just grab your flare layer and your outline layer, duplicate it, and go to your duplicated outline layer, hit MR keyboard, copy the mass path of the second letter. And then you come here to the beginning of your timeline again, hit piano keyboard for position, click the stopwatch to delete the keyframes, and then paste the new keyframes in there, stretch out the timing of the last keyframe, make sure they're easy, easy keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard, and then go to your duplicated line effect, change the path to the next letter or path, and perfect. And as you can see, it's really easy to duplicate the effect and it looks nice. All right, and if you expand out your word, you should have something very similar to this. It looks really nice. Now what I want to talk about is building a scene because an effect by itself is just not good enough for me. You got to build an awesome scene. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. 
But before we move further into our tutorial, I want to give a huge shout out to our 650 Motion Graphics Starter Pack extension right here for After Effects. So this is our motion graphic starter extension where we can preview hundreds of elements just by hovering over them inside of After Effects within any After Effects project. And we have hundreds of titles, accent motion graphics, animated backgrounds, and more within this one pack. And when we find an asset that we want, we can just click on apply and it automatically applies a title animation to our composition, which we can go into and easily change out our titles. And we can come into our control layer and make any adjustments to help fit our title best and easily change the color of any elements and titles very easily. And to help enhance this even further, we can come here and apply a quick cluster to take this to the next level with a click of a button. So within about a minute's worth of time, we've been able to put together a full composition with some really nice details very quick with our motion graphics starter pack. And we have several other packs that we can easily switch over to and start applying templates from there as well. So if you're looking to save a tremendous amount of time while producing great work for your projects, you can take a look at our motion graphics starter pack along with our other packs off our website. I will link them below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. All right, so first thing we should do is we should select all of our flare layers and we should move them to the top of our timeline. So we have everything separated. Then let's grab all of our stroke outline layers and let's hit T on keyboard for opacity. And let's come here to say like five seconds or so and we'll add a keyframe for opacity and we'll move forward by maybe a second and we'll bring down the opacity down 0%. And what we'll do is we'll offset our keyframes randomly so our words will kind of fade out, our letters will fade out uh, individually and it'll look really nice for like the end of the scene. So you should have something like this and that looks awesome. All right, let's go ahead and create the awesome glow effect that you're gonna get with the stroke here. So we'll go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll bring this adjustment layer between our flares and our outlines. And then we'll go to effect perspective and we'll grab drop shadow. And we can select our drop shadow color to be the same color of our flares and click okay. Then let's set our softness to 20% or 20, excuse me. And let's set our distance to two. And let's go ahead and duplicate our drop shadow, set the softness to 80. Then let's go to effect stylize and let's grab glow. Let's come here and let's set the glow colors to A and B colors and the color looping to sawtooth B greater than A. Let's select our color A and grab the drop shadow color. Awesome. And we can come here to glow intensity and set this up to like 2.5. And what we'll do here is duplicate our glow effect. And this time let's set the glow radius up to like 120 and maybe bring down the glow intensity to two. Awesome. Then let's go ahead and duplicate the glow effect one more time and just click on reset. Beautiful. Now you're gonna get this nice glow outline here and that's nice. But let's come here to our glow two effect. All click the stopwatch for glow intensity and type in wiggle, open parenthesis two comma five, close parenthesis. So let's go ahead and take all of our layers and let's go to a layer pre-compose and we can call it stroke effect. Perfect. So I wanna add some creative effects to this. So first let's go to layer, new adjustment layer. And let's go to effect noise and grain and let's just add noise to this to help out with the banding that you get on the glow effects maybe set up to 12 percent and uncheck use color noise that will help with the overall banding and make it a little bit more cinematic i want to go ahead and create a reflection of our stroke effect because it's going to look beautiful so one thing you'll need is a like a texture of a floor or something like that so you can download the project files to get this exact uh, image that i'm using but you could just search up like a grunge texture or something like that and what we'll do is we'll bring our floor layer, toggle switch modes, and make it into a 3D layer. And we get R on keyboard for rotation. And we'll set the X rotation to 90 degrees. And then we'll hit P on keyboard for position. And we can bring this layer down. And we can hit S on keyboard and we can scale it up if we want to. And readjust the positioning of our floor. Then what we'll do is grab our floor layer. And we'll go to effect, color correction, curves. And we'll just kind of brighten this up like so. And then we'll grab our floor layer and we'll pre-compose it. You can call it floor. Move all attributes to new composition. Click OK. Turn off the floor layer. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we'll get all this blackness around our, you know, our effect here. That's because of the lens flare and it's blending options. So we'll come into the rectangle tool and we'll grab our stroke effect and we'll just kind of draw out a box around our logo like so. We can hit F on keyboard for mass feather and kind of just feather this by a hair. Okay, just a quick little cheat that we can apply there. And then what we'll do is grab our stroke effect and we'll duplicate it and we'll go up to layer transform and we'll flip vertical then we can just bring down our bottom layer here perfect and we'll go ahead and create one more adjustment layer and we'll put that adjustment layer underneath our original stroke effect so it'll be right here and then we'll go to effect blur sharpen and add a compound blur and set the blur layer to the floor layer beautiful and now we get this beautiful reflection on the floor and 
you know, you can adjust the maximum blur, you can invert the blur, um, and play those settings. You get really unique looks uh, when you just experiment with what looks best. I also added in these light beams, which you can download for free. I'll link it in the descriptions from uh, Premium Beat, which has like a pack of like 20 of these volumetric lights and dust elements, which are really cool for enhancing your scene. And you can just drag those into the scene and it look nice. All right, with everything said and done, here's our scene and it looks really awesome. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. So that is our tutorial on creating this light stroke effect right here inside of After Effects. I love doing this sort of thing, so I hope you enjoyed this video and are able to take away a handful of techniques away from it. If you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks, those links are below, and always be creative.